So I'm speaking with uh, Julie Weiss, who is the marathon goddess. Hello, Julie. Thank you for Hi. being here. Thank you oh, for having me. That's your victory thing, right? I suppose. <laughs> So the marathon goddess comes from what? Tell us. Well, the marathon goddess is really uh, about embracing whatever it is that you love to do. Awesome. Okay. I love to run marathons. Obviously, I sort of dubbed the name marathon goddess because that's what I love to do. And so whatever you love to do, it could be cooking, dancing, whatever um you can be um you know your own champion of that god goddess whatever you want to call yourself um whatever just truly makes your spirit shine and for me it was running marathons and nice that's why well i saw the name on a shirt to tell you the truth oh yeah okay marathon goddess nice uh, and it just was like wow i love that so let me go see if that name is available and lo and behold it was so i i claimed it awesome, awesome. <laughs> but there's i'm not the only marathon goddess it's not just about me there's many of us out there and uh but i think you've earned that title because of so many marathons that you've done and in fact um 52 marathons in 52 weeks which is actually what one of your books is about both of your books are about um, yep, yep, Very your good. first one um, with uh, John Hans, one of my good friends, um, The Miles and Trials of the Marathon Goddess, that's your memoirs. So that story is all about you running 52 marathons in 52 weeks. Yeah, and it's not just about the marathons, it's about, you know, what really got to that first finish line, uh, start line. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and I took you through some of the, the marathons and the miles and trials of all of those marathons. But going back for a second to talking about the marathon goddess and, you know, I earned that title or whatever. Truly, um, it wasn't just about running the marathons. It was more than that. It was so much bigger than that. It was because what I was doing and why I was running. I was why I was running to uh, raise awareness for pancreatic cancer and we'll get into that but um it was much more it was much bigger than myself not just about me it was about giving back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, which is i believe really what makes you a god or a goddess or what makes your your soul shine and your spirit shine is when you're giving when you're helping others oh that's awesome yes yeah very good message so that's yeah that's really what it became. And I'm very grateful that I was able to get this book out with the help of John Hans and Allie Nolan and, and you and the whole team uh, just really came together. It's a beautiful book, very inspiring, not just for runners, but truly anyone who is looking for some inspiration uh, just to get off the couch and maybe Excellent. even go for a walk, you know, well, that, that's, a, first step. that's a lot to do with your book is the whole message of how you got started. Cause you haven't been, you weren't running marathons your entire life necessarily. I was a late bloomer actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Midlife> crisis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about that. How that Midlife crisis. Uh, at, at 30, 37 and my, yeah, about 37 uh, is when I started running. But prior to that, I sort of found myself overweight, depressed, single mom, two teenage kids. And I was really just going through the motions of my daily life. And I knew there was something more, but I didn't know what, and I didn't know how I was going to get out of this funk and, and my way to get out of this funk was to take um, antidepressants and it was just sort of a dysfunctional life and very, um, you know, uh, wasn't very good for, for me. I was, you know, drinking and overweight and antidepressants. I was functioning, but it was dysfunctional. 
Mm-hmm. My quality of life was really, you know, I, I was just sort of numb to it. And, uh, you know, I, I did the best I could, but I always knew there was something more. Mm. And I always want to tell people if, if you're ever feeling like that, I mean, running sort of found me. It, I didn't, I didn't know what it was going to be. Running found me. So if you're in a spot where you don't know what to do, you don't know what your passion is, you don't know your, how you're going to get out of this funk, I'm here to tell you, don't worry, because the universe will bring something to you that will excite you. And if you keep going after that energy of something that gives you excitement and energy, figure out um, you know, the feeling of that and then follow it. And that's mm-hmm. what I did. So like running came to me. I was on a, going to a trip. Um, I was going to take a trip to Hawaii with my, with my family. And obviously in the book, we say everything looks better in the Aloha state, which is true, which is, right, yeah, yeah. You know, which I started running in Hawaii, but I made a pact to myself. I loved it so much that I, I started to feel alive. I didn't need those antidepressants anymore. I was very grateful that I had them at the time because they, they truly saved my life. But um, I made a pact with myself to keep running when I got back to Santa Monica with my dog. And we would run on the beach every morning. And I just became sort of addicted to that feeling of being healthy and alive. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it. Maybe I can run a marathon. Mm. <laughs> and the rest is You've never done that. You had never done that before, right? Huh? I had never run a marathon, not even a half. I, I, um, one of my friends said, hey, why don't we sign up for a triathlon? I was like, sure, hey, let's go for it. And I, uh, I was so excited after I, I finished that triathlon that I was like, okay, I'm hooked. Let's sign up for a half marathon. Wow. Did that. And then after that, I was like, well, if I did a half marathon, what's stopping me from doing a full 26.2 miles, right? I could do that. So I think I started training in... January for a March race, don't do that. (laughs) You need more time than that to train for a marathon. But I I did it and it was, it was painful. And after my first marathon, I thought I would never, ever do another marathon again. But of course I had to redeem myself and Mm. uh, I got the running bug. Some people (laughs) <laughs> I got it. I'm hooked. <laughs> and you say that there is a uh, a running high that you get, and if you don't run, you miss it, right? Is that absolutely? I mean, that that feeling of uh, sort of like euphoric feeling that you get from running that combination of serotonin and dopamine, and just feeling connected to your body and breathing and feeling healthy again. Yeah, it's very addictive. It's um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm still running today, either, even after 109 marathons, I'm still going. And uh, it's not always about, it should not always, it shouldn't be about your pace that there's a time and a place for that. But uh, it was, it's really for, for, to feel good, you know, run, a lot of people run to run the crazy off or to just, you know, run for your soul, run for your spirit so that you feel good. And, um, yeah, of course, training for a race is a whole a whole other ball game. Right. And that's now, fun. That's fun too. <laughs> um besides uh help, helping you mentally and stuff, it also helped you obviously physically, right? Absolutely. I lost about 35, 40 pounds within 3 to 4 months or something like that. I mean, it was uh pretty incredible to sort of get Julie back, you know? Mm-hmm. I I have been overweight as a child. It just sort of, you know, with the antidepressants and and the junk food, I I started packing it on, but uh, it really started to melt off very quickly. And part of that was probably because I stopped taking the medication, but, uh, and obviously eating better and exercising. Um, So yeah, I I lost the weight pretty quickly. So not only was it good for my soul, but it was good for my waistline for sure. And then, so with helping other people, um, so, you know, you helped yourself getting back into running and all that stuff, doing your own marathons, but then you started to, you started your charity, 
Well, I started running for a lot of different charities uh, to help cure pancreatic cancer. The one I'm running for now is uh, the Hirschberg Foundation for Pancreatic Cancer Research. But I also started with the uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. That's when I did the 52 marathons for. Um, I run with Project Purple. Mm -hmm. I have run with Team for Life. I've, uh, you know, there's so many wonderful charities out there. Uh, right now, I'm running with the Hirschberg Foundation and the Hirschberg Training Team because um, they're also wonderful and one of the official charities for the LA Marathon, which is like my home marathon there and my very first marathon. Was it? Wow! Yeah. Wow! And that's the the picture there. Yeah. Uh, from my hundredth marathon. Perfect. LA Marathon. So. The 52 marathons in 52 weeks. I think that's like what the most amazing story. Yes. <laughs> How did that come about and why? Well, it's sort of bittersweet. I, I lost my father just 35 days after his diagnosis to pancreatic cancer. Uh, sadly, he was my biggest fan and we sort of had a, um, a rough relationship growing up. And then when I started running, our relationship got better and better. You can read more about it here. Mm -hmm. Available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was sad because I had, you know, two good years with him, two really good years when I was running and he was supporting me and sadly lost him to pancreatic cancer. And uh, it was just so, so sudden and so, so awful. I felt so helpless. And I, I knew that I wanted to do something to honor him. And I thought, um, I had heard about a guy that had done 52 marathons in 52 weeks, Dane Rauschenberg, actually. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I could probably do something like that. Now, you know? up to that point, how many marathons had you run? About 25 or so. Okay. So you have done it before, but they were spread yeah. out a lot further. I, I did like uh, 12 in one year, and I thought that was a lot, which it is. Yeah. You know? yeah. But, I, but I knew that my body recovered fairly quickly. So that I could probably do something like this. And when I had this idea, I was just, uh, it was like an epiphany, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to raise a million dollars to help cure pancreatic cancer. I don't know. I, I had no idea really how to do, how I was going to do it, but I knew I was going to do it, you know? And, uh, and so I, I just, you know, when you commit to something like this, that, that is so big and so awesome because, you know, you're doing something for the greater good here and something inspiring for many to, to, to see this happening. The universe just kind of conspires to, to help you. Mm -hmm. And I had all these miracles just started happening and things started falling into place. Uh, the spirit of the marathon too, the documentary, uh, I was honored to be featured in that movie, which uh, was actually became uh, the first marathon of the 52, the Maratona de Roma. That was the first marathon of the 52. And you can check that out wow. on Netflix. I think it's, yeah, Netflix. So make sure Spirit of the Marathon 2, a very inspiring movie about seven and runners. I think that's on your website too, actually. Yeah, all running the, the Maratona de Roma. And it was just a beautiful um amazing experience but when I, I had finished that first marathon I was one down 51 more to go I had no idea what I was getting myself into I was like a different person I was like oh this is gonna be so awesome excuse the helicopters I'm gonna run 52 marathons and it's gonna be wonderful and fun and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into and once I once I started I think I got to about marathon number five or so and I I realized these marathons were challenging. My body was in shock for the first four marathons, uh, but it started to adjust. And I, I realized by the time I got to about marathon number five that there's got to be more to this. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started dedicating every single marathon that I ran to somebody affected by pancreatic cancer. So it wasn't just for my dad anymore. It became something, uh, uh, this journey of love, of embracing the entire pancreatic cancer community wasn't about the time, wasn't about my pace, right. it was about honoring these people, helping people. And I actually took off my watch. I wasn't concerned about the time anymore. 
sometimes, but <laughs> you know, I have a lot of yeah. So, and that's what kept me going. This notion that I was helping people and this wasn't about me or the marathons anymore. Um, this was about them. Nice. And um, in the, in the book, you talk about the fact of finding 52 marathons in 52 weeks and having to travel to them all and get yourself situated while you were still actually working full time. Right. That's right. Somehow, uh, that's another miracle that I kept my job the entire time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't get fired. I almost got fired. Uh -huh. I didn't get fired. Thank God. I, uh, I would work Monday through Friday. And on Fridays, I would um, sometimes, you know, rush to the airport, get on a plane, uh, go run a marathon on a Saturday or a Sunday. As soon as I was done with the marathon, I would hop back on the plane and get home so that I could make it to work Monday. Uh, once in a while, it would take an extra day or so. But for the most part, I, uh, I was back there in the office Monday morning uh, with a lot of coffee. <laughs> lost it, I bet, right? Because yeah. Me, everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like the lights were on, but nobody was home Monday morning. And then by about <laughs> Wednesday, I would start to um, come around again and fully recover. It was amazing how, how my body recovered that quickly. But right. there, was, there was not a lot of, um, there was no social life. I mean, it was really, the social life was the marathons. And it was, you know, all about recovery that entire year. It was sort right. of like a, a year of tapering, a year of getting to that first, that start line. Uh, injury free, ready right. to go. Yeah. Awesome. Sometimes awesome. the marathon was more, um, the marathon was easier than actually getting to the start line. Once right. I started running, I was like, Oh God, thank God. <laughs> you know? So it was quite an adventure. I mean, thinking back, it was just like, how in the world did I do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, everybody can read about that in the, in that book. And then you also have, with Gender Fire books, you also have the children's book. Yay! Tell everybody about the children's book, because not only do you inspire adults, but you're inspiring children as well, which is awesome. Yeah, I, it's, it's really important for me to uh, help inspire the younger generation and let them know that they really can do anything they set their mind to. Of course, um, you know, it's any age. At any age, you can do that. Even at 50, 60, you know, whatever, 70, 80, whatever, you, you, you can still, you know, there's your dreams or some of your dreams are really still possible. But for the younger generation, I wanted to um, show these kids that anything is possible. Like if they, you know, and to never give up on a, on right. a goal or a dream and, and, and show them, you know, a little, a little bit about, um, you know, just to, to give back. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as you know uh as well as doing something fun and doing something that you love but but bringing the aspect of helping other people along right. the way and uh it, it's just I, I want i want these little kids to know and to to be inspired and you know if they're running or whatever they they're doing i i want them to remember to have fun but it's yeah. not always about winning the race of course winning is can be fun as well but you know, as long as you're having fun, um, that's, that's what matters. And, you know, I've got my dad in here. I've got my dog in here. We've got finish lines. We've, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, really cute. And um, I'm, I'm really grateful that I have something for the adults and the kids. You know, it's a, it's a great companion book. So if you want to get one for yourself and one for the kids. Yeah. yeah. Got it. And got actually... It. So those are both on Amazon, and actually, you have a ton of really great positive reviews on all your books on Amazon. <laughs> I know, I'm so grateful. They <laughs> even the other day, um, I, I sent I sent this to a little uh, a little kid, and um, well, the winner. We did a contest. We do contests sometimes, and we give away books and stuff like that. So I on sent, your website um, on my Instagram. Okay, good. At Marathon Goddess. So I, I sent out the book and I sent out the children's book and she had given it to her niece and she sent me a video of her niece uh, running her first race saying we got this the entire time. So nice. she's, she's like six. So, you know, little kids love it and they get excited and then they start saying we got this all the time. And 
So be prepared for that. Right. <laughs> that was something I, I say, and I say it a lot, but right. we, we got this. And then that was sort of became my mantra. Nice. Uh, at first, I suppose it was, I got this, you know, okay. and, then it, and then it transformed into, we got this because it, it just, it wasn't about me anymore. It was truly about all of those that we were helping along the way and all those amazing people I met. And uh, sadly, some we lost from pancreatic cancer, but you know, we keep going. We never yeah. give up. And yeah. That, yeah. And you've had, you've had quite a few people that have um, joined you in the races as, as part of uh, people who have fought pancreatic cancer and you run with them and everything. Yeah, I've got like Lupe, right? yeah, the, Lupe, um, Lupe Romero de la Cruz, one of my um, best friends who sadly we lost last year to pancreatic cancer, but uh, she ran uh, the last mile, my 52nd marathon with me. She's run oh. a lot of races with me. I, I've met survivors at the finish line and we ran across together and um it's it's yeah. really been quite a journey and uh, i'm grateful for every step and every person i helped and met along the way you mm -hmm. know? that's awesome that's awesome yeah. so your yeah. goal is to raise a million dollars yep we um so far uh have raised nearly seven hundred thousand nice and, uh, mm. probably be over that in a few months, but I'd like to get to a million. I'd like to get over a million. I'd like to see a cure. That's what well, we want. Let's see if I can show everybody your website. This is your there website, marathongoddess.com. And actually on it, it has the, um, it has a clip from the spirit of the marathon too. It does. And it has this a clip. Is your clip, right? Some interviews and lots of inspiring stuff. Awesome. The and past time. Hopefully, um, by the time you watch this video, the virus is gone. But if you're in quarantine, have nothing to do, check it out. You'll be inspired. That's right. You can still get out there and run. You can get out there and walk. You can wear your mask. You can do things to make yourself feel alive. You yeah. can do things to give back. If you want to make a donation, here we are. Um, you can hop on my website. All donations go directly to the Hirschberg Foundation for Pancreatic Cancer. And, uh, you know, they're doing some amazing things out there, especially now it's um, really important with all the focus on the virus right now. A lot of um, our charities are sort of, you know, have been put on the back burner, but, you know, cancer doesn't take a day off. Mm, okay. Good point, good point, yeah. We still have that, we have to deal with it. And uh, we have made progress from when I started running uh, about nine years ago, eight years ago, when I started this whole journey, uh, the, the survival rate was like a 5%. Uh, we've doubled that now it's up to 10%, but that's still dismal. It's like 10% 10, 10 of people survive after five years, which is still not enough. So mm -hmm. we, we need all the help we can get. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to learn more, you can go to pancreatic.org. That's their website, the Hirschberg Foundation. You can get involved. Uh, but there are many other wonderful charities out there. I, I just want to, you know, let people know that <laughs> when you're going out there and doing something that you love, but then you do it for someone you love, that's mm -hmm. when the miracles happen. That's, that's when the true. miracles yeah. When, you're, when you're out there doing something you love, something for yourself, you got to start with you. And then you think about who you want to help, somebody you love, something you love. You're going to be amazed at what you can do. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. keep going. So that's my yeah. message to you. Yeah. And also, I, I see that your message is very much to give back for all of your success and to help people um, give back, right? A hundred percent. That's, that's what, well, it's, that's what it's all about. You have to take care of yourself first so that you can help other people. Mm -hmm. and so I started running. I, you know, came out of that um, sort of funk that I was in, you know, when I was overweight on antidepressants, I found something I loved. Right. And then I started giving back because sadly when my dad died, I, you know, I was like, how can I, how can I help? Mm -hmm. how, can I how can I help? How can I use my running in a way that will inspire people and 
and cure this disease, you know? And so many people have, have been inspired by the journey and have joined uh, forces. And it, it's a wonder, wonderful thing to see. And I, um, you know, I just, you know, don't underestimate the power that you have. You never know who you're inspiring. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. do what you love, do it for someone you love and right. watch, watch the miracles happen. So how else do you think I did that? 52 marathons. That's <laughs> 52 amazing. Marathons. You know, I, uh, but it doesn't have to be 52 marathons in 52 weeks. You know, I, I just tend to be a little extreme. That's just my personality. But, you know, uh, a 5K, you know, for many people is a huge thing. And it is. I mean, uh, you just have to take that first step. Yeah. Watch oh, yeah. That's a good confidence. message. It's all about the first step, right? Yeah. And watch your confidence come back and watch yourself feel alive again and embrace that and then share it with others and then help other people. And then together we, we change the world because right. now we're all becoming alive again and we're warriors and we're gods and goddesses and we're all helping each other. So that's, that's really what it's about and the children as well. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Cool. Thank you, Julie. Great. I appreciate you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, you did an amazing job. Good, good, prior good. Books. Yeah. Thank you for um, all your help and check us out on Amazon. That's right. I appreciate it. Yeah. Follow yeah. Along. yeah. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Marathon Goddess at Tender Fire. Right. We're out there. We're here to help you and inspire you. So, um, cool. Remember right. to have fun. Oh, and we got this. Oh, we got this. All right. Thank you. <laughs>